You have these ideas, and very often it started with a no, but the no became a no yes, and a yes, <laughs> and then make, made it into a lot of trials and tests, and that's what I like about it. What's going on guys? Waco from Revolution here at Omega headquarters in Bien. Today we're gonna to be meeting up with two incredible guys, CEO Reynold Eichelman and VP of product Greg Kissling, and they're gonna show us this incredibly new innovative hairspring called the Spirate. Come with me. What's going on guys, Waco from Revolution here in Vienne, here with the man, the myth, the legend, Reynold Leishman, how are you, sir? Very good, hello, Wei. It's a pleasure to have you in, in beautiful Bienne. The pleasure is entirely mine. And you know, uh, thank you so much for inviting me to the launch of this incredible watch, the Omega Speedmaster Super Racing with the new Spirit technology. But let's talk a little bit about Omega and its DNA in real technical achievement. You know, the only uh, brand that was uh, passed all of the torture tests for NASA, the watch that went to space, the Speedmaster that saved the crew of Apollo 13, and then you know later in the 90s, the, the first watch brand to actually bring something completely new in terms of escapement technology with the coaxial, and today you add to that chapter as well. But to me, what was very interesting in your opening remarks was you were saying that it's these incredible achievements, this true watchmaking, that actually brings the emotion to a luxury watch brand like Omega. Please clarify that for me. No, I think, thank you. I think that's very important, you know, being, being, being the CEO of Omega. First of all, to respect, you know, the movement. You know, we are the one and only brand that name comes from the movement. And without this vision of incredible uh, technology at that time, we wouldn't have been present today. That's, that's, that's quite of, a, of an obvious part of our DNA and, and definitely want to continue. And I remember very well, you know, Mr. Hayek talking about, you know, why he decided to have George Daniels, you know, working with our, our, our people in the factories for creating, you know, a new chapter of the, of the heart of the, of the watches, which is the coaxial escapement. And, and it was already more than 20 years ago. So already at that time, we had this vision of working around the inner, working about the intrinsic strengths and, and, and qualities of our watches. What I want to say, and I'm, I'm, I'm not the, the only one, but for me guys, so much present is that we are very lucky in our industry uh, to work not only on what I can call a branding, marketing, communication base for all our product, you know, what we've shown with, with Omega very strongly within the last uh, five to 10 years is about, you know, working on all the small details. You know, when we talk about a watch that has a soul, we should also know that the soul is being made out of all these small pieces, all these small mechanism that makes it so important on a 24 hour scale or, or on a daily basis that, that makes that also people are being inspired by it. And that's very important. That's why our quest at Omega is taking it from the DNA of who we are and making it to the next levels. We work on the precision. We work on mechanism. We work on technology. We work on, on, on materials because this is also the way we are celebrating this incredible emotion that people have when they buy our watches. You know, it's very interesting because I think during your opening remarks, you were saying, listen, we make watches and we're dedicated to watchmaking. We don't miss, just make accessories, you know? And I think we've seen recently also, there's been the rise of, of, of brands that are very focused on watches, almost as accessories, you know? Mm -hmm. Many of which are, are quartz driven, of course. Um, and I think that with no disrespect to those brands, which are maybe doing a great job, it's not the same because Omega has always represented the truest and most beautiful dimension of real watchmaking. Why is it in a world where, you know, a mechanical watchmaking is to some degree anachronistic, you want to place it at the highest level possible. You want to split it to 0 0.1 of a second. I mean, why is that important to you? I think it's important because this is exactly the, the main quest of a watch is to be precise. And, and our mission is also to continue this incredible journey that we started with Master Chronometer Certification because it has value. We should never forget about the incense, the essence of, of, of our watches and make it to the next level. You know, if I remember well, Speedmaster, as you were mentioning, you know, became such an, an icon because it was well thought. The watch that was tested by NASA 
the only one we had the success first, and then the only one which was on the moon, was a watch that could have been available for any Americans during these days. And this is for me one of the base of our success, but it should continue to be the base of the success of the next generation, because to talk about watches, it's not only to talk about storytelling, it also needs to be on an industrial level, as we are at Omega, on the quest, on the possibility, and on the incredible and marvelous emotion of knowing that the brand has been doing the best in terms of any kind of mechanical innovation or pioneering spirit, like we've been doing with the most incredible one, which is precision. Right. I love that. You know, tell me a little bit about how you marshaled all of the group's competences, all of the expertise within Swatch Group to create this incredible achievement of the Spirit. I, I love the fact that I've actually visited Niva Rocks. I'm always blown away by the, what they're able to achieve, but the fact that you guys all work together mm -hmm. to bring watchmaking to the next level. Talk to me about that, sir. You know? Yeah, we've, we've, we've had this uh, spirit since the beginning of, of, of the Swatch Group. This is part of the Swatch Group, this verticalization that is so important for us. That is, by the way, also being, being something that some of the competitors, some other people in the luxury industry are trying to create. It goes into many, many, many things. First of all, the fact and the emotion of being working for the same group. The second point, which is also being able to share our dreams, to share our values, to share our views with people that, because we are there, have open doors as much as we have open doors with them. Third point is about their passion, because they wear an Omega watch. They have the pride because it's also very important for us to talk about them. Fourth, as you were mentioning, by having also people visiting, being interested into, into what, what we have. And the fifth, which is the most important to me, is this ability of getting into the spirit of brands, the end products. So they are not just suppliers, they're part of our team. They're being invited in my office, sometimes with Gregory, just to open some of our ideas and they bring it to the next level. So that means that suddenly you have scientists, engineers, incredible you know, um, um, scientists that get to the feeling of where we want to go and where we want to dream. And that's, that's very important. And this all the, under the umbrella of the Swatch Group. And of course, uh, having also there uh, Mr. Hayek pushing very much into it, because this is also one of, a, of a, our main character, if you want, this ability of making it into not only one watch, two watch, but at least for Omega, into a new standard uh, for many, for many, many reasons. You know, without getting too technical, what I'd like to talk a little bit about is that this actually brings an all new level of precision to watchmaking. So what you have is essentially a watch that is actually regulated like a free sprung oscillator would be, any free sprung oscillator would be beforehand with plus or minus one second, even before that we start using the micro regulator, right? And then the micro regulator is then used as a fine tuning device to exactly. get to the next level. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? Um, so this is a technology, as you were saying, that first of all, took 10 years to, exactly. to, so how does it feel one decade you know uh, later yeah, I think I think that's also one of the point that uh, I got to learn a lot by having these milestone projects of being patient patient it means that you know in the world that we want to do once again into an industrial base we had to have these ideas and very often it started with a no but the no became a no yes, and the yes, <laughs> and then make, made it into a lot of trials and tests. And that's what I like about it. So I'm very happy. So for everybody that thinks that I'm totally impatient and talking too much, it's exactly also this feeling that I'm sharing now with, with, with everybody saying, hey, we made it. And it's now coming in a moment where Speedmaster on the top of this have had the best ever year uh, behind it. So we are very thrilled about having had in that case, to work very hard for some times and then making it into, you know, even always much bigger light in the tunnel, but then to come, come with that, it's, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling also because that was the dedication about not only finding a solution, but making it also in a way that it's so very clearly explainable for each and every of our customers. 
You know, I'm blown away with what you've achieved for the, the Speedmaster. Uh, you, you sometimes talk about yourself as a dinosaur, but I, I sense quite the opposite. You have the energy of a, of a young man, and what you've achieved during this period with your enthusiasm for the Speedmaster is incredible. If I look at what you did with bringing back the 321, bringing back these amazing watches, including the Ed White, bringing a new level of luxury to the, the Speedmaster as well. Um, I have to say, incidentally, the, the gold watch with the green dial is one of my favorite watches of all time. Your gem set pieces, people are going crazy for them as well. I mean, and now you've got this, the Speedmaster, you know, super racing. What is the, the, the future for the Speedmaster? What can it be? Or can it be so many more things, you know? I think that what is very interesting is that, um, you know, uh, I always say it about Speedmaster, failure is not an option <laughs> as for the as for Snoopy and, uh, and for Apple 13. It, it, it sounds like a, like sometimes a bit of a of a half of a joke, but it's also very serious. Because you know one that's that's one of these magical iconic design that you have first to respect and work on also on the fact that you should not just use it, you should just respect it and make it even better. And uh, honestly, once again, I'm very thrilled about the fact that this technology now is starting into that movement and into that place because it's going to be a very, very much of a dedication, you know, master chronometer certification or being back to the first 15,000 Gauss watch was in a Seamaster because it was also linked with the whole st story and the whole ideas we had about waterproofness and going deep. So this is now the perfect watch. Speedmaster is in the meantime, one of the main collection, not only one product that is used to be being saved by Mr. Hayek 30 years ago, is one very big pillar of the Omega family, of the Omega collection. And as such, it's also now with this watch, for instance, being not only the pillar, being the most incredible iconic watch to present our new technologies. So it makes it that very much of a symbol of, of the celebration we have for this, more than, more than in any case by still keeping its DNA, which is honestly one of the most agreeable and cool watch. In the, watch, in the watch world. Totally agree. Uh, last question for you, Randall. Um, 2013 uh, was also the year that a pretty amazing watch, also a Speedmaster, in a very dark colorway, called mm -hmm. the, the Dark Side of the Moon, was yes. launched. It's the 10th anniversary of that timepiece. Will we be seeing something along those lines? I have to admit that uh, that Dark Side of the Moon has been you know, following the evolution of uh, Speedmaster and that we are, we are on our way, of course, to continue to celebrate it, because it's, uh, it's, it's one of this collection that made history within the Speedmaster family. And as you were mentioning it, we have the feeling it was always there, but it's been 10 years. So to be honest with you, yes, this, this watch is one of the miles, a milestone of the evolution of Speedmaster, but it comes to the time that uh, we, will, we will have to, to we are working on, on it, and uh, you'll be surprised. <laughs> Randall, it's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you and so congratulations. Much. It's an amazing achievement. Cheers. But what you have created is something that no one has ever done before, because first of all, you have essentially the best of the best of a free-sprung balance wheel. But then on top of that, you have a micro-regulating system that actually changes the stiffness of the hairspring, bro. How did yeah. you do this? Explain this to me. <laughs> yeah.